Rufus and Shaka Khan, and ain't nobody. It's Isle of Wight Radio. It's 14 minutes past seven. It's Isle of Wight Radio. Live across the Isle of Wight on FM 107 and 102 and on Facebook as well. If you're uh, following us on Facebook, uh, you can watch us uh, watch us on, on the telly sort of thing. Uh, we're talking today about the Isle of Wight NHS Trust. Not the normal kind of show that we would put together, but we felt that it was important as a follow-up. Uh, last time, uh, there were rumours about the Isle of Wight NHS Trust going into special measures. It's happened. It's kind of like the worst kept secret ever. Uh, Karen Baker stepped down around 10 days ago, taking her place as the, and I've got to get this title right, as the interim chief executive is Dr. Mark Pugh, uh, who joins us on the show this morning. Morning. Good morning, Paul. And it's a technical point. I'm the acting chief executive. We're, we're, we're hoping to appoint an interim in the very immediate future. So you're very temporary? Very temporary. Okay, so uh, well, it's kind of uh, fallen on you, I guess, to answer the difficult questions, uh, because the report came out uh, midnight uh, last night, and it's appalling, isn't it? It is a really yeah, difficult report, there's no question about that. Um, it's absolutely not where we'd want to be. I don't particularly want to be in this position having to talk to you this morning about a report like that. I'm sure it's uh, for Isle of Wight residents and patients it would be a cause of concern and that's why I'm keen to be here, I must say, to try and talk that through and, 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 and give people some sort of balance and assurance around that. But yes, it's a very difficult report and it will require us to undertake a lot of urgent action to put a, a, a many things right. So what kind of things are you putting right? Well, so, um, the, of course, the, the initial inspection was undertaken um, in November last year, and so since then we've done a lot of work in our inpatient mental health wards where there were concerns expressed about the safety of the environment for patients, and I can absolutely assure people that that environment is completely different to what it was uh, when the inspection was done. It's not fixed, um, but, it's, but a lot of work has been done, and a lot of work has been done around working with the things that we can't fix immediately. Um, we've done a lot of work in the community too to look after patients uh, whose care was criticised because they weren't getting reviewed enough and all those patients that were particularly cited in the report have undergone reviews. And across the, the, across the organisation where it's been easy to fix stuff, we, you know, we've immediately fixed stuff and where it's more difficult to fix we've started to draw up plans to fix that too. I mean the good news is, is that uh, the one really positive thing reading the report uh, last night is the staff really do shine in this. The doctors, the nurses, and basically all of the staff uh, that are involved in caring for patients uh, and working with patients at the Isle of Wight NHS Trust are the heroes of this report, aren't they? But it's the, it's the top tier that have let them down. You're part of that top tier, so do you feel responsible? So I will answer that question. Let me just before we move on from the, the staff, because they too, I think, will be really upset by this report and will find it difficult to read and, and will we'll feel bad about, about what's contained therein. And I'm, I thank you for saying that what you said about them, they are they go the extra mile every day and I'm really proud to work with those people. So who's let them down? So, right. So I would absolutely have to put my hand up and say as part of the, um, the senior administration of the trust, that we have to acknowledge that we have not done what we should have. Uh, and in particular, I think we have not advanced, worked hard enough and delivered fast enough. The, 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 what is I think a lot is, what a lot is contained in the board, I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my words here, um, which is around behind the work that people do on the front line, the assurance mechanisms to ensure that what they do um, is safe and when there are problems that we respond to that and fix stuff properly. I mean, that, that scares me. The word that, you know, reading through the report, there are many examples. Uh, one of the quotes is, examples of unacceptable risk to patients. What examples are there? Well, so um, we mentioned already uh, so let me first of all say that healthcare and, and delivering health is always risky. There's no such thing as utterly risk-free healthcare. And so what you have to do is But they're talking about unacceptable yes, risk. Yes, So let, let, let's talk, so let's get reasonably specific. Also specific. So one of the things that was highlighted in the report repeatedly was a, 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 the risk for mental health patients around what are described as ligature points. So these are fittings and fixtures in ward areas around which mentally um, ill patients could potentially 
hang themselves, um, things like taps, door handles, and so on. Um, and I mentioned the stuff that's been done since the report has come in. So that... The, the, Why that, wasn't this uh, spotted before? Why does it take, though, a, uh, a team of government officials to come down and look to point these things out? Because, you know, you as part of the top team, and I, I do feel quite bad, actually, because, you know, you are part of the top team, but, you know, you've been thrust into this role in the last few days to kind of take this heat. You know, we did invite the, the chair of the Isle of Wight NHS Trust uh, in on the show, Eve Richardson. She's been there from the top. And one of her main roles is to actually make sure you guys are doing your job. It wasn't done, was it? Well, if I just return us back to this issue of those, those ligature points. So work was done around those. The teams had policies to, 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 to what we call mitigate risks. So that's reduce the risk and, and work with patients to make sure that if patients were, at, were seriously at risk of that, that they were managed in a way that they wouldn't be put in areas where there were more of these ligature risks. That was all in place. And two years ago, when the, when the CQC came to the island, you know, the, they didn't feel that there was an issue with the environment. Since they were here, the standards went up, and frankly, our organisation didn't spot that and, and up, their, up their level of their ante. I mean, to, there are to, other to things that. in this report about... Um, the ambulance um, station, uh, confidential records uh, not being secured, uh, medical medicines not being secured. Uh, so it's a worry, isn't it? I mean, these, these surely are basic things. If you've got confidential records, I would hope that my confidential records remain confidential. They're not available to anyone who happens to wander in. Well, I suppose I would say you shouldn't be able to just wander into the ambulance station. That's not not to not to take the general point away that there were. There but that's were pretty much what the report says, isn't there, it? I mean, to be fair, I mean, you know, that's what it says across the organisation. A number of things that you might describe as kind of <clears throat> simple housekeeping, storage of medicine, storage of notes, and so on, has has been picked up, um, and that just says to me that you know our hardworking staff just have let some of these things slip. Uh, but you can't blame them. It's, it's down to the top tier monitoring this, because if they are, their, their key priority, I'm guessing, is to actually, you know, if you're an ambulance staff, you are out and about, you are dealing in the front line of the NHS, the same as most doctors and nurses. Your job is to actually take a step back, along with the trust board, and to actually say, do you know what, that needs to be fixed, that needs to be fixed. And it didn't happen. So, fair cop, okay. Um, I, I think what I would, I would say to that a couple of things. One is, we're short of staff, and so when, when patients, when, when staff are short on the front line, they then concentrate on patient care, and they do an excellent job, and that's what's picked up in this report. That, that then sometimes takes their eye off doing some of the other sort of background, what I've described as housekeeping, but clearly it's more important than that, type duties. The trust board should be aware of what's going on, and I would absolutely accept that the work, the job of work we need to do is to make, is to improve what I've described to our staff as the pipes and wires that connects the front to the top. And what has happened over the last two years is that we've had a big internal reorganisation. The team, working in a very difficult NHS environment, have been struggling with meeting targets, working with the money, and they we perhaps let, uh, you know, and this is my, uh, I would have. I'll honestly say as a confession I have to make to you that we probably let some of that quality stuff slip and that's the piece of work we urgently need to do a piece of catch up work on. So who is to blame? Who, uh, who, who is to blame? Because Karen Baker obviously has stepped down. Yes. Is she the scapegoat and actually you know there are other people to blame in this that are still in their position at the Isle of Wight NHS Trust. Does it need to be cleared out at the top and a new team brought in for a fresh start, or is there hope? Well, Paul, um, so the chief executive does carry, you know, the prime responsibility and accountability for, for standards in the organisation, and I think it was, uh, it spoke to Karen's values that she thought she ought to step down when the contents well, of this report came out. Also, okay. also just to be fair to, to Karen here, it's also the role of the chair of the trust, isn't it? to do that. Uh, the, actual, the actual job description is, the key thing, uh, the quality and safety of health services and to actually uh, 
have an overview of what you guys on the top tier are doing to make sure you're doing your jobs correctly. Have they failed you? Um, I don't believe that, that Eve has failed in her, her role. Um, she can only know what she what she knows. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a chairs are a part time role. They're not they're not there twenty four seven um, reviewing everything. And if they're not getting the information through, which I'm saying, I don't think the right information was coming so through you, to the board. So you you didn't actually at the board meetings these kind of things were not discussed. No, I'm not saying they weren't discussed. It's about how much airtime they got. So they various issues, a lot, well, a huge amount of information comes up to the trust board, and we review it all. But what we so let's talk bullying. Uh, this is this is another thing that came up. Uh, I would assume that this has probably been discussed at board level. Uh, what kind of examples of bullying? How bad is it at St Mary's? Because it was one of the things that was brought up in the report, and I'm guessing that unless it's pretty bad, it won't appear in that kind of report and be told to the inspectors. Is that right? Um, so let me start off by saying that we absolutely have a zero tolerance to bullying. It's something that we... Let me just finish. But it didn't been, work, did well, it, Mark? Well, you know, we, we can talk about bits of paper and policies and this, that and the other, but the fact is... Reading the report, and correct me if I'm wrong, there is a real issue with bullying which can only surely hinder the help and the care that staff can give. Where's the bullying come from? What kind of examples? What is actively being done about it now? So the um, um, bullying was, was something that we discussed at Trust Board, particularly um, in the context of the ambulance department, where a, a big uh, review was undertaken, and that has been reviewed by Trust Board. Off the back of that, we've set up a, spe a specific group of staff to work on bullying. We've set up what are called bullying buddies, which are to allow people who feel bullied to, 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 to match with someone and get support from them. We've updated our whistleblowing policy that if people feel they have something to say and they're not getting the chance to say it, that there are routes for them to do that. And we have um, a speaking out champion that people can go and talk to if they have concerns about, uh, about their work. Did it shock you when you read that? Um, it didn't shock me because I knew about it and it's something that we'd already discussed. Um, you know, what people, um, the report obviously was done last November and that's, you know, almost all but six months ago. And so it's something that we've already looked at and, and I believe we have effectively When addressed. you first heard about it? Yes, when I first heard about it, I was shocked because my experience now and I still, you know, do clinics on the front line every week. It's not my, my lived experience that we're a bullying organisation. But, you know, you absolutely have to accept this at face value. And when it was um, clearly looked like it was an issue uh, and, and, uh, within the ambulance service, we then undertook a very uh, extensive um, external review of it to try to make absolutely sure that we got to the bottom of, of what was going on. Uh, and what was going on, I think, was there was a, a change in the management uh, structure within that organisation at the time, at the same time when a lot of pressures were building up around the non-delivery of targets and there were shortages of staff, which just became a, a very difficult mix as people were trying to kind of even manage that situation. Let's talk uh, very quickly, because we're running out of time, unfortunately, uh, about how you're going to improve things. Now, uh, Philippa Slinger. Uh, has been brought in. Is she effectively your boss now? Um, she, uh, just explain her role. Sure. So Philippa Slinger, Slinger's title is the Improvement Director. She has been appointed by our regulator to work with the top team to do the work that needs to be done. So her, what's so, her background? So she was a previous um, NHS chief executive uh, and she's undertaken a number of other sort of roles at that level across the, the NHS. She's worked Successful? For the well, I... I wonder whether what you're going to get to is that she was the chief executive uh, at uh, Wexham, uh, which was the hospital that was eventually merged with a more successful nearby hospital. Uh, and what I would say in defence of Philippa was that that was already a failing hospital when she took it over. It wasn't one that went went off under her under her watch, but she came up with what was the best solution for that organisation. So what I can say is that she's been working with us for four weeks and she's been incredibly helpful uh, and I'm sure she will help us turn around the organisation. I mean, she, w she was working at Wrexham. Yeah. She went in there and it was a, a failing hospital when she left? Um, it was, well, it, uh, it, the, the solution that she thought was best for that organisation, which has absolutely seen that organisation turn around, was that it was merged with Frimley Park.
Okay, and how, how was it when she actually left? Did it come out of this? this? Uh, so yes, so yes it did. It, it, has, it has moved out and its, uh, its rating with CQC has dramatically improved uh, through its association. With so Bank she's Bank. in position now to turn this round. How long is it going to take? When can we expect to see results, Mark? So uh, most NHS hospitals in special measures are in special measures for a period of one to three years. Um, typically after the report comes out you get another inspection about 12 months later through CQC and they will then decide at that point whether you've improved sufficiently to move out of special measures. And it is certainly my absolute uh, intention, that will be something I'll be committing myself to, that we will move out of that within the soon, as soon as possible, but it will be at least a year. And what can we expect? You know, how um, how will we, as potential patients, what can we what can we see? What 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 resources are you going to be given to turn this around? So what I hope is is that people will still experience the high level of, of care and dedication that our staff uh, are, are good at, and that is recognised in this report. And what I hope is that they won't be distracted um, by, by by the negativity that surrounds the report. Um, look, lots of our outcome measures are perfectly good in the organisation and so I, it's not that people should experience you know, huge differences in their care because in lots of areas our care is perfectly good enough but I would particularly point out in, in the area of mental health which is, 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 is often the focus for a lot of this report that things like access will improve, uh, their, their involvement in the, in the delivery and drawing up of their own care plans will improve and they'll find a more responsive service uh, that they will value more and they will then and that will be then reflected in things like the mental health user survey which is done on an annual basis well let's hope that things do turn around uh, how's your first week in the job been um it's been a pressured first week paul yes it uh, i suspect most people who do this kind of role um don't want to step in at this moment but actually you know, I accept my responsibility for this and I, you know, I acknowledge that I should be here answering these type of questions and I hope that through some of my answers people on the other white are assured by what they hear. Thank you very much for coming in on the show. I know it's not an easy thing to do, especially when you've only been doing the job for a week uh, to come in and face that. I'm sure there are many more questions that many people have um, over the coming weeks. Um, we come back on the show? Um, I certainly will. Either myself or, or one of the team will be delighted to come back and talk to, talk to you about it. Well, it's an open invitation for you, Eve Richardson. We did try and get her on the show today, but she was unavailable. Um, to come back and answer some more questions. And we wish you the very best of luck. And as we say, you know, the staff that you have working for you, if there's ever a team that can, that can make that happen, uh, as the report says, the staff are stunning. Yeah, I, I absolutely support that and I'd be delighted to take you up on your offer uh, and come back and try to and describe what we're doing and hopefully keep, give people more assurance that we're doing the right thing by them. Well, Dr Mark Pugh, thank you very much for coming in. You are the acting chief executive That's correct. The of the Isle of Wight. Chief executive. OK, how long are you going to be there for? Um, well, we're talking to someone who, should be, will, who could take on the interim role and hopefully they'll be in place by the end of this month or the beginning of May. OK, and uh, a full-time role? That will be a full-time role pending the... So that's an interim whilst we go out to advert for the full-time substantive person. Will you be applying? Uh, no, I won't be applying. It's uh, You have to have a particular skill set to be a chief executive, which involves a lot of off-island work. Actually, I'm a frontline clinician. I want to spend my time working with people on the front line, putting things right, not spending my time doing the kind of politicking that a successful chief executive has to do. Well, I know that you and uh, Eva Richardson are going out meeting the staff, asking, answering their questions today. So we'll let you get on with this. And thank you once again for coming in on the show this morning. Thank you.